Hello everyone. In today's video, we are going to discuss about the Deep Link module. It is one of the most downloaded and most used marketplace modules that Mendix provides us. Deep Link module makes it possible to link any microflow within your application and make it also accessible to anyone by a persistent link that we also know as a URL. In today's video, we're going to build on top of our last week's data grid two tutorial hack. So if you haven't watched that video, uh, the link is in the description below, right? You can go and watch that video if you want, where we talk about um, the advanced data grid two hacks that Mendix doesn't provide out of the box. To get access to this application, uh, there's a form in the description below, which where you can submit your Mendix developer account email address, and um, I'll share this project with you. So let's get started with the deep links. So the first thing we need to get started with the deep link module or anything about deep links is to download the marketplace module on deep links. Um, so if you click here and it'll open the marketplace right in the site tab over here and you can look for deep link. And here you will see the deep link module. This is, this is the one that you need to download and install in your app. Uh, for the purpose of this video, I've already installed it. So uh, we'll be able to see it here in the marketplace and yeah, in the marketplace modules and deep link. So I'll go ahead and close this window for now. So the first thing after you download any module in the Mendix application you should always go and read the docs first to understand what to do for the setup and um, and how to use the whole module, right? So deep link is a is a very powerful module, but it's also very simple in terms of uh, setup. So again, if you want to do any customization on this particular module, then they suggest that you create a new custom module, uh, for example, by giving it, giving it a name as deep link customizations. Uh, what happens is if there are any future upgrades with deep link module, then your code or your changes won't be overwritten. So, um, so that's the first advice they give us. And the second is, um, they say that uh, copy all the pages and microflows which you would like to modify in this new module that you have created, right? So you don't need to copy the whole module, but just copy the things that you want to customize. And now from the third step is where the actual setup starts. So it says create a general after startup microflow in your project settings, which means that when you go to project settings in the runtime, um, you're able to set up a microflow which will run after every server restart or when you're starting your server for the first time. So I've just given it a name as startup. Um, you can give it any, any name you want. You can follow different naming conventions that your organization uh, supports. So, but uh, there are different, in a, production level application, there are multiple things that needs to be followed, but because this is a simple uh, tutorial example, I've just added deep link into this. So uh, based on the, based on the Mendix documentation, what it says is the first thing we need to do is create a startup microflow in project settings, and then call the start deep link microflow that deep link module already provides from this startup microflow. So that every time your app starts, it will start deep link as well. That's the main purpose of it. But you don't have to do anything other than just start deep link. Um, it does return a Boolean variable type as well. If you want to make any decisions off of it, right? So if it was started, not started, would you like to retry and all those things? But for simplicity purpose, I've just, I'm not using that variable. So I've set it to no. Um, the next tip it wants us to do is in the uh, whenever your navigate to home page microflow is it wants us to call the deep link module so for example if we or not the deep link module, but it wants us to call the um, deep link home microflow right so if i go here sorry in the navigation if i go here um my default home page for this application is a microflow that is navigate to home in the last video if you 
remember we had it set up to the page that is home underscore web but now that we need to add extra logic to the to it uh, we cannot have it call a page so I've, had, I've created a new microflow that's called navigate to home and what this navigate to home does is I just call another microflow that deep link module provides it is called deep link home right and it checks if the user that's coming to the home page is coming through a deep link or a not deep link right so if it is coming through a deep link then we simply have to uh, call the end activity and not do anything else because deep link will handle all the logic behind it and if it is not coming from a deep link then continue with the regular navigate to home flow which is which in my case is just go to the home page so now if we look here uh, for the next step um, what it does is you can either also add deep links by using deep link configuration um, so we'll talk about that on how to set up deep links right um, or copy the snippet this thing right so now to set now your basic setup is done but how to you how to configure deep links right uh, set up a new deep link and all those things so um, I've used a simple thing which is in my navigation I've already I'm just using a page that Mendix provides by default or the deep link module provides by default that is called uh, deep link config page and what this does is it will be a page where you can set up deep links right so if you go to the application in my application it it looks like this so if you go to links um, this is how the page looks like but you can set up a new deep link um, update the older ones and all those things now when we come here um, we can also the same setup that we do here can also be done through microflow in the startup microflow so that a deep link is registered every time someone every time your app is started so if it is something that is a critical deep link right which uh, you don't want your employees or your admin to be missing then you can set it up using a microflow over here so um, so for that Uh, if we go to the use me section and for configuration um, so they have multiple options here which, which we can use and this is the So these are the multiple options that they give us, which they want us to use and which we can use if we want. But we can also use the uh, create deep link microflow as this step suggests over here, right? So let's just search for it and so create deep link config is something that we can add to our uh, startup microflow and just give it a name for a deep link. What you want and when this deep link is called what microflow needs to be called right and if you want to pass any object types object attributes and all those things so you can use these things as well but for our simplicity purposes again we are not doing it through here so we'll be just doing it through the through the page um, that's provided in the config right so that's all about the about the read me section of it now let's go to what i have to the setup that i have done so what i have done is i first added a page where i can configure a deep link so if we go to that page um, so this is the page <coughs> where we'll be able to see the the deep link configuration now the first deep link that i've configured is the weather deep link right so um, you can what you can do here is the link will be called something like um, in my case it is localhost 8080 slash link so this part will always be static this this will not change your base url slash link and then slash what after the next slash will be weather because i've given the name over here if you give something else it will be that name over here and then you can also pass in multiple 
query parameters if you want. So in my case, I'm passing a city name so that it will show me the weather only for that city. And so the you if someone uses this link, then they'll not be taken to the home page. They'll directly be taken to the weather page, right? So if we go to our application here, this is the home page where we have a list of cities uh, that show us uh, multiple temperatures and then, oh, sorry, the cities or list of cities. And when you click on one of the cities, it will take you to a different page that shows the temperature of it. So if someone just wants to see the temperature of the city and they want to store something as a bookmark, what they can do is uh, your users can do this slash weather and slash Edmonton, right? And if they store it as a very, uh, as a bookmark, uh, they can directly go to this link. So I just copy this link for now. Let's close this tab, go to a new tab. And if you do paste, it'll take me to Edmonton directly and not the home page. So that's a deep link. Now, how have I done all this setup? So if we go to the deep link module, and you see that I have to select a microflow, right? So when this weather is set up, when I set up this deep link, we need to tell deep link what module we need to call or what, sorry, microflow we need to call. So my microflow is DL, this is my naming convention again. So deep link underscore temperature by city. So if we go and search for this particular microflow, it will give us all the information um, that we need. So, or that the deep link module needs. But to start with it, um, let's reduce everything. Okay, so <clears throat> the what happens is when a deep link is called, right? So in the, and the deep link module recognizes it, and then it says that oh, this is the micro. It checks in its database and see what microflow needs to be called. So. It knows that we need to it needs to call this particular microflow and pass in the city name as a parameter so when it passes the city name i first check if the city name is empty or not empty if the user has passed the city name or not if the user has not passed the city name then we give them an error if the user has passed the city name we look for it in our database right so if the city name does not exist then um, if we give an, a different error and then if you go next, if the city name is available, then we show the page. So the first flow that we saw was a happy path scenario where the user was able to see everything for Edmonton city. But now let's try the other two scenarios where um, we do not pass in a city name. So So this is our viewer and let's not pass any city name. So if you do this, it'll give you an error and say, oh, we could not find a city name in the URL and we have re redirected you to the home page. So that's the, again, information or error that we are throwing in this particular flow. If you give it a different city name than Edmonton, right? So say, give it a uh, Calgary then again, it will say that we could not find a city by the name Calgary in our database. So we redirected you to the home page, and you can add Calgary as a new city and try it again. OK, so let's do that. Let's add Calgary as a new city. And save. And now let's try the same URL again with Calgary. So Calgary doesn't have any weather data right now, but it will still take us to the page because the city exists. So now if you do Calgary, it doesn't give you an error or an information, right? So it takes you to the temperature page where there's no records. And again, from the previous tutorial, if you look, look at the, um, or click on the generate weather data, it will generate the data for you. So that's the logic. Um, and again, if we use the deep link again for Calgary, then it will show you all the temperature again that we just or the data that we just generated so that's the that's the power of deep links where it can take the user to any page and anywhere you want 
you could also use it as affi affiliate links. So say if you have an e-commerce website built on top of Mendix, and then if your users want to, if you want to give your customers a referral bonus on, on when they share this URL with someone else, then for every unique user who is sharing your links, you can uh, create um, the, uh, the IDs or some kind of unique referral uh, um, string, which uh, where you can link it to the user and then give them the bonus, right? So in, in that case, what you would do is say, you can, again, you can have multiple, multiple parameters, right? So uh, you can give it as referral equals some random string. And again, if you're doing, if you're adding a new query parameter in this case, uh, you will need to set up in the microflow or the, yeah, in the microflow that is called when this deep link is executed. So if we do this right now, um, it'll still take us to this page because the second link, is, the second query parameter is being ignored by Mendix right now. It just looks at the first one. So that's, um, that's deep links for you guys. Um, I'll be committing a lot of these changes that I have done to this same app. So you should be able to access this um, once you access all these changes soon, once you give me um, your URL and I add you to the project. But again, to get access to this Mendic application, um, click the link in the description of this video and submit your Mendix developer account email address so that you can also have access to this to this application yeah and yeah that's it for today thank you for watching